Hi, good afternoon. So thanks for coming to our presentation. So now let's start our presentation beyond the, our private cloud, retrospective and experimentation of the stack classes. So first of all, let us introduce myself. So thanks for introduction. So my name is Yushiro Furukawa. I'm working at Edu uh, Corporation over three years. And uh, he is Shunya Kitada. And he's also senior software engineer and working for Edu over 10 years. And he, she is Misha. And the, she's also working at Y over two years. And the, I am with her on X9 Corporation. And the Shunya is working. Shunya used to work in Yahoo Japan. And the, you know, um, recently, um, come line and the Yahoo Japan has merged and the, becoming into the LY Corporation. Um, we call it line Yahoo in Japan. So we provide the famous um, communication application in line and you know um, comprehensive internet service Yahoo Japan and this exploring service we integrated into one company and this is the business for four years so we can provide and not only like messenger but also like strategic and the commerce and the AI things like that. So this is numerical overview of Android Corporation. So a little bit many numbers here. But so I let me pick up the number of users in the like this one, user of the group is over three hundred and twenty million users in here. So okay, so let me introduce today topic. So we are using now uh, managing and operating the two big private clouds named Beluda and Yahoo Japan Private Cloud. Today's topic is here. So and the, now uh, after company merger, we are now um, creating a new private cloud, but uh, this is out of scope for today's presentation. So let us into, um, focus on the experience and knowledge about existing private clouds. Here is today's agenda. So first of all, uh, let me introduce about what is the Peruda and what is um, Yahoo Japan IRs. So both private clouds are using OpenStack, so let me introduce about the uh, architecture about it. And then, the Shumia will explain the retrospective and the experiences for development part. And the Nisha will explain the retrospective and the experience for operation part. So now, let's move on. So here is a picture for uh, Beluda and what Yahoo Japan Fly the Cloud. So the point, uh, I want to talk, um, we are using OpenStack as an infrastructure layer, both Beluda and Yahoo Japan Fly the Cloud. And several services are running as a pra uh, platform as a service. And the, yeah, this is the previous slide. And the, something like our product is run, um, hosted on our private cloud for each. This one. And the, here is the scale for both private clouds. Left side shows the Beluda, and the right side shows the Yahoo Japan IRs. And we were starting the, our private cloud from 2016 and 2020. And the number of the hypervisor is a little bit okay, difficult to see, but like this is um, 15,000 hypervisors in Beluda, and the 24,000 in Yahoo. And the, virtual, the number of virtual machines, we are managing the 120,000. Okay, <laughs> and the, um, this is uh, 20,000 hyperversions here. And uh, so especially the open stack, the number of open stack class by itself, uh, we are, Beluda, we are using uh, totally equal to the number of regions, so three or more clusters. And the, on the other hand, the Yahoo Japan IRs, they are managing the more than 160 clusters. So the, this is a big architecture difference here. And the, now uh, let's explain the brief architecture. So first of all, please look at the left side. So this is the architecture for Beluda. We are using uh, Keystone and WebUI as a global component. So global means the region-wide. Uh, and the 
After that, um, the bottom of the side explains the regional component. So we are using one open stack in one region. Any hybrid version and bare metal servers and MySQL. So the key point of the Beluga is a single open stack cluster in our region. And the, on the other hand, uh, Yahoo Japan provides this kind of architecture. And if they are using the discovery API, okay, I will explain it later. Discovery API and UI and MySQL as a global component. <coughs> and the, the point is different is here. So they are using the open stack cluster in, as a regional component. So the multi open stack clusters in our region. And the, so the, each cluster should be provided for any project or product, something. And the, from the operator point of view, the oh, sorry, infrastructure operator point of view, they'd like to know the all instance information or all kind of like flavor or other uh, network information to get one API. So the discovery API is a kind of a wrapper API. And then once we call, for example, so if the operator wants to know the num whole number of instances for all, all open stack classes, they can call the discovery API and they get all the instances uh, of the whole clusters. So then there is a very like, big difference uh, architecture between the Beluda and Yahoo Japan IRs, but uh, from the operation or like the development part, something like the knowledge and sharing is uh, knowledge and the experience is uh, kind of similar. So that Shunya will explain about this point. Well, thanks, Greta. So, in this part, I will talk about open stack upgrade strategy and deployment strategy. So, first topic is open stack upgrade strategy. So, the open stack upstream is continuously improved with a new feature being implemented and uh, several bugs being fixed. And uh, we also have open stack and uh, we operate uh, our open stack. So how should we follow the open stack upstream implements? Or uh, how to upgrade our open stack? And actually, we need to apply our custom patch to our open stack with our company system. So uh, following upstream or not. Both Delta and Yaku Japan IAS have chosen not following upstream. So also Line and Yaku Japan were not working together at the, at the time. But uh, coincidentally, we chose the same strategy. So let me explain the strategy in more detail. Firstly, we pick a stable open stack version at the time. In this example, we chose the Rocky version. And then uh, we fork the version and uh, apply our custom patches and uh, maintain the forked branch until cluster is closed. So this is so simple and uh, easy to maintain. But uh, in the short term, this strategy appears straightforward but, and maintainable. However, uh, in the long term, there are some pain points. So, the first thing point arises when we create a new open stack cluster. So when creating a new open stack cluster, we need to uh, we need to load our custom patches from the version. And since we have out of custom patches, the porting them all is out of work. The second pain point arises when we maintain multiple clusters with different versions. When we want to apply our custom patches, we need to create multiple patches for different versions. And actually, uh, we need to create new patches to address new security risk or to, su to support a new operating system for old versions that, that no longer supported by OpenStack committee. So uh, it is hard to maintain multiple version of OpenStack cluster. And uh, it gets harder. As, we, as a new version of the stack cluster is released. And now, uh, we are creating a new private cloud. So in the next cloud, 
we plan to follow the upstream. Because we already know not following the upstream has uh, some defaults. And we believe following the upstream is better approach. This is still just an idea, and this strategy may also have some pain points. I don't go into the detail in this session, but I would like to share the outcomes with the new strategy at the next time. So, look hard to read until next time. <laughs> yeah. The next topic, I will talk about the deployment strategy. So, our basic policy is IOC, which stands for Infrastructure. <laughs> So both Delta and Yahoo Japan IAS basically for this policy. In Delta, uh, we use Alco CD for deploying the controllers and uh, Ansible for deploying hypervisors. And in Yahoo Japan case, uh, we use Helm for deploying the controllers and uh, Sync for deploying the hypervisors. So we use different tools, but uh, we achieved managing our infrastructure as code. I think there are some changes in hypervisor deployment. So I will focus about the hypervisor deployment. So we have a large number of hypervisors, and hypervisors have an important data frame. So it means our, our company services are running on hypervisors. And so we need to deploy safety and quickly to hypervisors. So, once the code is mounted on GitHub, it is automatically deployed in production according to one schedule. The scheduling is an important thing. If a deployment code that would call a hypervisor to go down were installed and deployed to all hypervisors, it could cause a critical incident for our company's services. The mitigate this, uh, to mitigate this, this risk, we need, to, we need to perform a high risk to reduce the impact of potential, uh, any potential failures. And we also schedule deployments considering failure domains such as region or mobility zone. And the deployment is scheduled to be completed within a week. So in a Japan case, uh, the code is automatically deployed to all hypervisors over five days each week. This strategy is uh, working well in our private cloud. Our strategy is working well, but some small issue exists. For deployment safety, uh, we need to improve, uh, improve the quality. But in actual deployment, uh, several deployment of hypervisors have failed, and there are these failures uh, of the ignored. And uh, some issues can be resolved by deploying, but sometimes deploying is failed by bugs in the deployment code. And from the deployment speed perspective, uh, when we need to fix a critical bug, we want to deploy new code to all hypervisors immediately. However, there are uh, several limitations for deploying, such as uh, the performance of CD pipeline, and distribution servers for packaging package or container devices and more. Since we have a lot of large number of hypervisors, and it's so it is challenging to deploy to all hypervisors quickly. In the next card, we will have even more hypervisors. Currently, we have over 40,000 hypervisors, and the number is growing. It, it means deployment quality and speed becomes more important. Mm -hmm. So we will work for improving the deployment. For example, we plan to manage versions of our deployment code and deploy the tested code version. And when we need to deploy specific code immediately, we figure it out. This is still just an idea. But I look to share about this topic at the next summit. That's all for the development part. Next, Nisha will talk about the operation part. Thank you, Shunya. Hi, everyone. So, in the next 
part we talk about the operations, major D and two subsections, daily operation and life cycle strategy. So yeah. As you have already seen the super large scale of Verda as well as Yaku Japan RS. So a surprising factor is that if you look at the scale and then you look at the operators. So the operators number is super super small compared to the scale. So like for example Verda we have like nine operators operating the entire large cloud and in case of Yahoo Japan S we have only ten operators. So this is a surprising part and we believe that we achieved this because of uh, very well set up daily operations. So there are two major checkpoints, first being the systematization. By systematization we mean automation or having scripts for doing uh, daily tasks, for example, hypervisor deployment, restarting agents, etc. We use different things that we etc. for this purpose. And we are happy to share that both Verda as well as Yahoo Japan IS have already achieved the systematization, which helps in maintaining human staff. However, the second point, which is the main focus point for today's session, it is basically transparent sharing of operators' knowledge in the team and our customer support. This is a pain point and let's talk about it in more detail in the next slide. So let me give you an example of a sample with customer support request. So let's say that a user says that his VM has failed error status and things like uh, look into it. So the operator then looks into it, investigates, maybe finds a solution and fixes the problem. And, it, uh, and the end user is like, okay, thank you so much. From end user perspective, this is all good. From operator's perfect perspective also, this is nice. However, when there is another operator who looks at this request, so this part, the investigation and the operation that the operator did is hidden. So this is the main point. Uh, like the internal investigation part and it is not shared to the team. We believe that this is something we can uh, focus and we can also achieve this in our next cloud. So, Point being that like we can prepare some easily accessible team like chip chips, ultimately increasing the efficiency of the team and also the speed for which we handle the customer support and rest. So yeah, this is what we plan to achieve in our next cloud and hopefully we'll share it in the next summit along with other So the second part is life cycle strategy, deep play migration. So uh, around three years ago, we faced an issue of end of life of hardware or OS, and we had to migrate VMs because of the room and rack replacement. And within, in this uh, scenario, we only supported old migrate for VM, which is why like some VMs could not be migrated to the hypervisor. Uh, the reason being lack of VM portability because of IP network or volume. It resulted in basically lots of manual operations and we also had to ask end users to recreate VMs, which is something we have learned from our earlier experience and we want to avoid this in our next cloud. So let me give you a quick overview of the real data. Uh, we had around 18, like 1800 hypervisors that need to be uh, that were migrated and the VMs that were migrated were more than 9,000 and uh, we achieved this migration in a span of six months, which include operators' operation as well as end users requiring to recreate VMs. So what we learned is and what we want to avoid in our next cloud is we want to ensure VM portability so that if a similar situation occurs, we do not need to ask the end users and we also reduce the cost for both end users as well as operators. So we want to uh, achieve a migration within the APP zone. This is what we learned. So we are coming to end of our today's session and let me quickly uh, give an overview summary for the conclusion part. So uh, initially we introduced two private clouds, Aberta and Yaku Japan IS. And since we plan to make a new cloud, we are very happy to share our experiences and try to learn from it. And that is why we did a retrospective for the development part, which included open stack of trade strategy as well as deployment strategy. And then next I talked about the operation part, basically the daily operations and life cycle strategy. Uh, let me quickly share about our future work. So future work as in what we want to achieve in our next upcoming cloud. So we want to follow the option 
and we have already gone through the rough ideas as Shrina explained earlier. And second part, also we want to have quality improvement for our deployments. We want a safe and rapid deployment. And for the operations, in order to increase efficiency, we want to have accessible team-wide cheat sheets. And for migration and life cycle strategies, we want to ensure the important things. So this is something we have done and we plan to achieve in our next cloud. Thank you so much for listening. You are a super great audience. Thank you so much.